a koala. Welcome back. Referent number five, mortgaged out. This is a unique observation as it speaks to the idea that in terms of time and talent, we give our best productivity and creativity to others. By the time we take care of family and association obligations and find a moment or two for ourselves, there's no time left for freedom fighting. We're exhausted, mortgaged out. Economically speaking, we are mortgaged out because we buy too much and save too little. Debt has become the new slavery. Another way to say this more pointedly is that many of us are, li are living beyond one's means. Let me say that again. Many of us are living beyond our means, mortgaging our lives with credit cards and borrowing. Connected to this idea is our wholesale embracing of materialism. We love beautiful things. It's part of our culture, but it is truly time to reassess our priorities and redefine ourselves in less material terms. We have significant group wealth, but we have not learned how to harness our collective economic power, becoming instead world-class consumers to the benefit of the status quo. Referent number six, if you don't write the check, you can't write the agenda. This principle operates with virtually all our human rights and self-help organizations that must depend on corporate, philanthropic, and governmental dollars to survive. It is the reason why our children learn precious little about global African history, even as we do pay taxes, but we don't write the agenda of educational institutions, whether public or private. It is also why Mwalimu dropping the knowledge intentionally did not seek funding outside of my international community of people who know me, know this work, my standards, integrity, etc. The program is an example of community building, funding a project that I could not do individually. Referent number eight, we are seeking acceptance from outside of ourselves. It is past time for us to validate ourselves from within. The advantage of this position is the power to redefine success, manhood, womanhood, standards, values, etc., from our own historical and cultural center. Once we approve of ourselves, we won't look for someone else's approval. Of course, in order to achieve this position, we must cultivate opportunities to build unity from within. What does that look like? It means our thoughts, language, tone of voice, and actions must become more caring with each other. In particular, Behaviors that destroy unity must be stopped immediately. I'm talking hurtful teasing, gossiping, bullying, etc. This is particularly important as the subtext for this behavior is self-hatred, menticide, and isfet, reinforced by stereotypes, God imagery, aesthetics, politics, etc. This brings us to referent number nine. We must resurrect and use consistently our cultural rituals. In order to weave a reconnection to ourselves, our culture and to each other, shared cultural rituals must be utilized to allow us to transcend class differences, colorism, nationality, and other capricious dividers so we can understand our common destiny. Our imposed disconnection has us where we no longer see ourselves in each other. Consequently, petty jealousies, 
envy, and other self-destructive behavior patterns are now the order of the day. The day when we are kinder to one another will be the day the real revolution begins. As an antidote, this is where the global practice of Kwanzaa can be very instrumental in reconnecting us as a global people with a shared history, culture, values, and destiny. Strongly related to this idea is referent number 11. Understand your connectedness to African people worldwide. We are the only ethnic group who do not see ourselves connected to each other globally. As I have said many times over the season of two, that is the course of season two, we have embraced nationality that was imposed on our ancestors and it does not serve us as a global people. Nationality continues to arbitrarily divide us in ways that benefit our oppressors. Nationality has become an identity marker that has erased our knowledge that we are a global African people. It reinforces Western values of competition. Worse, it continues to delay our unification and the power to emerge on the world stage of policymaking in our own behalf and benefit. Here, the words of Dr. Kwame Nkrumah are most instructive. He said, all people of African descent, whether they live in North or South America, the Caribbean or any part of the world are Africans and belong to the African nation, end quote. In other words, we are one people and our oneness is our connection to each other. So while the historical condition of enslavement and the degradation of the last 400 years work diligently to sever our ties with each other, it is our responsibility and obligation to re-knit our ties to each other especially if we intend for our children's children to thrive in the 21st century. As mentioned at the outset, I have shared a selected number of my historical observations entitled The Reference. Other reference include topics of integration, allyship, reparations, consciousness, and spirituality. Some contemplation Questions to consider include how are the reference speaking to our community? How can we encourage change? What referent observation do we most need to implement and how do we go about it? How can we use these observations to resurrect our people? Like my work in general, my prayer is that the referent observations continue to expand, evolve, and provide illumination for the path ahead. That is certainly my sincere intention and passionate desire, dropping some knowledge for all of us to move forward with self-love, respect, dignity, knowledge, empowerment, and vision. Truly, we have our inside work to do for the next level of outside change. Or poetically speaking, it is up to us. It is up to us to take our consciousness and knowledge with us wherever we go, wherever we are. It is up to us to live it, to heal ourselves with it, to infuse it in our ways of moving about the world. It is up to us to do the inside work for the next level of outside change. Let us begin with the person in the mirror. Is it up to you to heal yourself of life searing hurts, to release the anger and pain of unforgiveness, to decide against bitterness in living this life? Only then can you be a healing balm to those whose lives you touch. 
It is up to us to bring knowledge to our circle of influence, to prick consciousness and enlighten our families, friends, neighbors, and the various organizations we belong to. It will not happen otherwise. It will not happen without us, all of us. A luta continua. The struggle continues, but it is up to us to move forward. It is up to us and let us act accordingly. And in doing so, may we please our ancestors. Ashe. Hotep. I am Mwalimu Melody Mishari Van Putten, and I have been dropping the knowledge. Ashe. Truth, justice, righteousness, harmony, balance, order, reciprocity. Justice, righteousness, harmony, balance, order, reciprocity. Justice, righteousness, harmony, balance, order, reciprocity. Righteousness, harmony, balance, order, reciprocity. Truth, justice, righteousness.